Listen, man, I don't particularly want to say robbery report right here because a close fight is a close fight. And when you leave it in such a close fashion, with the scoring criteria that we have right now, you cannot cry and you cannot be mad. But there is such thing as, God damn, what are we talking about here for scorecards right here? So Andrea Lee versus Macy Barber. Now, AJ, I told you I'm going to take a flyer on Andrea Lee because I think that if she can keep it on the feet, she's going to have a field day. Well, boy, was I wrong. Macy Barber was picking Andrea Lee apart on the feet. The real success for Andrea KGB Lee came in the takedowns. But you rack up takedowns. So five takedowns for Andrea Lee, right? You rack up some control time. You're in a good spot, but you're not doing a lot of damage, right? You're not really taking advantage of ground and pound situations. You're not bloodying up your opponent like that. She was on the feet, but she wasn't really doing it on the ground. Macy Barber does some weird, I'm going to hook your arm behind you and then elbow your head in while I'm off my back. So I'm at least being more active. And this leads to round three where she, where Macy Barber gets taken out every single round. And then they announced the scorecards. And I'm thinking, I, I just I hit on a dog, man. Let's go, Andrea Lee. They announced the card, split decision. Then they say 30-27. And I was like, oh, this has to be Andrea Lee. It has to be, right? Macy Barber by split decision. When you heard 30-27, and then when you ultimately heard Macy Barber victory, what did you think? I thought I heard something wrong, Derek. I had to yeah. double check. I even had to go check Tapology and be like, "What? Did this really go down?" Yeah. Yeah, you won't see, you won't say robbery, Derek. I won't say full-blown heist mode robbery, but somebody got pickpocketed for sure and there's a pay that happened somewhere. But uh yeah, no, I thought KGB Lee won this fight. In fact, I was sad I lost the pick, but happy for the resurgence of KGB Lee because yeah, we all thought the striking was going to be the key right mm -hmm. here. Turns out she's been in there putting the work on the mats and looked really, really good. I did like the creativity you talked about that uh, mm -hmm. that Macy Barber showed, reaching around, grabbing the arm with her legs, pulling it over. Very creative, very creative. Yeah. Ultimately, did it do anything where either of these fighters in a very dangerous position? Not really. But the control time of KG Billy is almost undeniable, especially, well, I guess, you know, with the inconsistencies in the judging, it does make yeah. it hard. But more often than not, the person in control of, of the position in the fight usually wins. So it was, it was interesting to see they, they switch it up. Well, this is my whole entire dilemma here is that it's like be consistent with the judging. OK, yes. Macy Barber, if you're looking at significant strikes, she outstruck Andrea Lee 48 to 39. However, Andrea Lee took her down five times and had five minutes and 20 seconds of control time. So it seems like at this point they're throwing all that out the window. And even the people on Twitter are over here while they're scoring the fight. At damage reign supreme over control time. I don't give a damn about control time, but it's like, okay, Ma Andrea Lee took Macy Barber down and held her in a position that uh, Macy Barber did not want to be held in. Do you not? You don't get points for that. You don't get points for inflicting your will on your opponent. Like I don't understand. So five takedowns, five minutes of control time. Macy Barber had two takedowns. And she had 45 seconds of control time. And obviously, she had some more impactful blows. Legitimately, she did. But I think Andrea Lee, um, I think she got dealt a bad one, man. And this isn't the first time, man. She's been robbed. And, I, and that's why I don't want to be careful with that rob word. But she has been on the wrong end of the split decision in her home state of Texas multiple occasions, right? So I actually want to pull up something right here, AJ, because you know this is probably the most adequate thing that we need to do right now, and we need to talk about the MMA decisions. So it's actually a lot closer than I, am, I had imagined when you go to the panels, right? It's almost split down the middle if you're looking at it, if not slightly favored in favor of Macy Barber here. But look at these scorecards. I want to highlight this. Dan Mergliata, right? These are his two um, uh, in 2023, right? These are his two judging performances. The last time that he judged was in 2020 in Bellator and then in 1999 back in the beginning days of the UFC. So my question is, why is Dan Margliotta not only refereeing the main event, but also stepping in to say, you know what, let me drop uh, two uh, decisions on some split decision cards where this one, I thought Njaquani won, so this is a bad card in my opinion. And then in this one, 30-27, that's just inexcusable. So give me some thoughts here. Inexcusable, Derek. And, and uh, my big thing right here is why are we having a, a, a person of such importance, a referee, a judge, double dipping and wearing two shirts in one night and trying to split his time up? No wonder there's there's fallacies and mistakes made, man. This this seems to be very uh, regional 
for yeah. uh, what is the biggest combat sports event, or maybe not event, but at least promotion in the entire world. Um, seems seems crazy that they would even allow something like this to happen. I mean, I feel like you either judge, you, you don't have a fighter going in fighting, and then the next one he's refing too. You know, like there's no there's there's no mix them. You can't double dip in this in this sport. Blows my mind. But I do what I wanted to show, Derek. Go back to oh, what yeah. your, your last screen. I do like that KGB Lee did have 3027s at the bottom from at least a couple. I don't know if I would agree with the 3027, but it's a lot closer. I mean, that that's more apt than the other 3027s that came out for sure. Well, as you can see, nobody has a thirty twenty seven barber in the decision in the uh, the media scorecards, right? So yeah, man. Once again, it was a close fight, but I really do think that when you saw thirty twenty seven for Macy Barber, the judges must love Macy Barber. Like I'm not trying to impose fix or anything like that. That's way too steep of a claim. But the reality is, she now has two major asterisks on her win streak, her big win streak, right? Miranda Maverick and now Andrea Lee. So I think that Macy Barber is getting the push right now. And I think Andrea Lee unfairly is going to lose that number 11 spot, potentially get kicked to the back of the rankings, if not out of the rankings completely. Because if you, if you think about it, Andrea Lee is, uh, I mean... Not the youngest, spryest cat, um, you know, on the roster right now. She's 34 years old. So this is this is a bad look right here. And uh, this I'm going to just leave leave us with this, man. Do you think moving forward with the highest echelon possible in terms of competition? Can Macy Barber continue to have victories if these are the type of fights that are getting put on? These are close fights, man. She's not really doing anything to stand out. What do you think? No. Um, unfortunately not Derek especially once you get into like you said Andre Andrea Lee's number uh 11 over here right what who is the top of the top of the division let me pull it up on so I don't make another mistake um flyweight this is yeah, Rosso's I mean, division even, yeah even if you want to go Blanchfield Firo Chikagian Maya Dondrad, like there's a lot of fighters up here that are very, very dangerous and have multiple sets of skills. And and I don't think if Barber fights the way she has been, at least as of late, she's going to run into a lot of opposition that can exploit a lot of the things that she does right and wrong. I mean, it, it, even even in those people I was just listing, there's a lot of fighters that can out Macy Barber, a Macy Barber fight. You know, mm -hmm. like there's so I think she has a lot of room to grow. There's an X factor there that Macy Barber does have, but I think she needs just a little bit more refinement, a little bit more time. Don't feed her to the dogs yet, but definitely feed her to that top 10, top 15 range. Let's see yeah. where it goes. There's, there's some fights she can get done, man. Viviana Araujo, I mean, Lauren Murphy, there's some fights there that can happen, but like the, the top five is, is going to be rough, and I think she needs to work on it greatly. Yeah, I think when Macy Barber really excels is when she can close the distance completely and start winging the big hooks. That's when she really sees the success because she does put damage on her opponents, man. But it just, I, I thought, listen, man, I thought Andre Lee won the fight. Macy Barber gets the win on paper, so congratulations to Macy Barber. But uh, this isn't the end of the controversy right here.